the Michigan High School Athletic Association and Pass Sports present the Boys Basketball Finals. broadcast of the MHSAA Finals is made possible by Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award, True Value Hardware, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports Are Winners program, the Michigan Abstinence Partnership, and the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Michigan. Always a great pick. Always Coca-Cola. From the Breslin Student Events Center in East Lansing, the Michigan High School Athletic Association presents the Class C Championship game in the 1995 Boys Basketball Tournament between the Hematites of Ishpeming High and the Wildcats of Lakeview High School. Hi again everyone, I'm Rick Berkey alongside for the second of four consecutive championship events here. In case you missed it, just concluded in Class D, Detroit Holy Redeemer won the Class D crown by defeating a gutsy squad from Crystal Falls Forest Park by nine points. Now we get ready for the Class C matchup though, another interesting matchup between the Lower Peninsula and Upper Peninsula. Let's go down for a preview of this one, the two gentlemen that'll call the game, Tim Stout and Gregory Kelser. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Stout. Nice to have you with us. This is Gregory Kelser. This is the Class C State Championship game this afternoon. Two teams with wonderful records, Gregory. Lakeview and Ishpeming, each 25 and 1. We got balanced scoring, veteran players, and we got a lot of loud fans in a sold out building today. You know, it's interesting how these two teams almost mirror each other from their 25 1 records on down. As you said, balanced scoring each with about five or six guys averaging between five and 12 points. The leading scorer on both teams averaging 12 points. This is going to be a very interesting game. Well, let's take a look at the key players for each team coming in today. And these are balanced attacks, but David Skorka for Lakeview is a 6'8", 200-pounder, and this kid's a pretty good player. You know what? He'll be the biggest guy on the floor for either team. Skorka gets about nine rebounds a game to go along with his 10 points, but there's another player for Lakeview that I think is going to be heard from, Shane Bias, who does a really good job okay. rebounding. And for Ishpeming, Chad Asgard isn't nearly as tall. He's only six feet, but he's a veteran player, and he had a big game against Olivet, got 26 points and 15 rebounds, and they're looking for him to have a big game today, too. Well, he's the guy that they'll go to in the clutch. He's not their leading scorer either, but he's the one guy that seemingly has stepped it up in these championship games. All right, Lakeview was 12 points down in the semifinals and rallied to win, and Ishpeming's another team that had a close game. These team games have gone back and forth and back and forth. You know they're excited. This is the second Upper Peninsula team here in the building today. Maybe they can take a state title back up north with them. Well, you know what, Tim? Both of these teams had to come back from huge deficits in their semifinal win, so I would caution either team, if you get a big lead, don't relax, because the other team is not going to give up. This is the Class C final. Lishpeming and Lakeview. Rick Berkey, take it back, and we'll get ready here for the starting lineups. Well, we're real close to starting the Class C state championship game, so we hope you're ready to enjoy this one. The Hematites going after it with Lakeview as well. Right now for the introduction of the starting lineups, let's send it down to Eric O. for South, our public address announcer. High school sports is to have fun, not to be number one. That's why good sports are winners. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for today's game between the Wildcats of Lakeview. And the Hematites of Ishpeming. For Lakeview, at forward, 5'11", senior, 22, Brock Place. For Ishpeming, at forward, 6'0", senior, 34, Chad Asgard. The other forward for Lakeview, 6'3", senior, 54, Shane Byes. 
Flourish coming it forward. Six foot junior, 44, Jason Charbonneau. For the Wildcats at center, 6'8", senior, 52, David Skorka. For the Hematites at center, 6'6", six, six, senior, 54, Brett Myers. At guard for Lakeview, 5'11", junior, 20, Jason Main. At guard for Ishpeming, 5'10", senior, 14, Mark Delangelo. The other guard for Lakeview, 5'10", senior, 30, Chris Thompson. For Ishpeming, at guard, 5'9", junior, 52, Jason Lawson. Head coach of Lakeview, Michael Schreiber. Head coach, Ishpeming, Gerald Racine. Officials for today's game, Don Gustafson and Barb Beckett. The alternate is Todd. We're ready for the Class E State Championship game. Ishpeming and Lakeview, you get a look at Gerald Racine, fourth year coach. He gets his hematites together. And the Wildcats on the other side, ready as well. Good one on tap, let's go down once again. Tim and Greg. Okay, here are your starting lineups. You just saw them all introduced for each of the teams. The Lakeview Wildcats, they're located in West Central Michigan near Big Rapids. And it's coming way, way, way up, uh, more than 400 miles away from this building in the upper northern part of the Upper Peninsula. There's an interesting story with the officials today, which we'll tell you about. Donald Gustafson is the referee. Barbara Beckett is the first woman in the history of the state high school boys tournament to officiate a championship game at Todd Gearlings as the alternate. Barbara Beckett is from Traverse City. She's worked semifinals and quarterfinal games before, but she's never worked the boys final, Gregory, so maybe there's a little pressure on her as well. She'll just do what she normally does. She'll be okay. Ishpeming controls the opening tip. Just underway. Nice to have you with us for the second of the four championship games today. The D champion is the Troy Holy Redeemer, 55-46 over Crystal Falls Forest Park. You know, both of these teams, again, pretty decent perimeter teams, but I'm looking to see which team is able to establish an inside presence. Well, that's Jason Lawson with an outside presence. He gets a three right out of the shoot, and we're up 3-0 in favor of Ishpeming. And Ishpeming trying to force a fast tempo. There's a foul right there. It's going to go on Lawson. So that's our first foul of the game. And Jason Lawson has it, the first foul here Jason of the game for the Hematites. So they'll uh, introduce, uh, or they'll get the ball out right in front of us. Here's the road the Lakeview Wildcats have traveled to the championship. And as you can see, Gregory, some close games. And uh, Flynn Hamity was their big win here in the semifinals when they trailed by 12 points. Well, a big part of that game was forcing Hamity to turn the ball over 20 times. I must caution, though, Lakeview turned it over themselves 25 times, and I think that's the reason why you see Ishpeming coming out, trying to press them right now. Okay, Shane B scored to make it a 3-2 game here and get to Lakeview on the board right away. Just underway, 7-1 to go here in the uh, first quarter, and here's the Hematites road here. They beat Olivet on the semifinal game in a very well-played game, 63-58, and as you can see, a little easier trip for the Hematites along the way, and they've been on the road for an entire week, Gregory, so they got an NBA-style road trip culminating in with this one today. <laughs> Three to two, Ishpeming out in front here over Lakeview, just underway. And the first sellout in the history of the Breslin Center for a final session of the boys' title. Here's another three from downtown, and that one's good by Jason Charbonneau. Charbonneau shot that very comfortably, and you see the pressure once again. Ishpeming, you mentioned they've been on the road five days. Like an NBA team, I wonder if they get the NBA per diem. Boy, I'll tell you, they probably love it. They may get it from their parents if they win here today in celebration. 6-2 yeah, to now. It's not a bad deal then. Not a bad deal at all. They call the attendance here 14,798 because the MHSAA takes a few seats out and uses them for other purposes as opposed to the 15,138 normally for Michigan State sellouts. And another foul. That's a second foul here against... Uh, Ishpeming. And it's a zone defense by Ishpeming, but you see Shane By is able to find a little crack inside of that zone. He's a big guy, six feet three, but strong. And when he gets it inside, he can handle 
the interior pressure because he is very strong. Brett Myers on the foul. That's his first for Ishpeming, second team foul. And shooting for Lakeview with Shane Bees, averaging 10.2 a game. Big kid, 6'3", 220-pound senior, who has the only basket so far for Lakeview in this game. Very impressed with his work in the semifinal game against Olivet. 14 points, 13 rebounds. It's going to be very important that he can duplicate those numbers today. Underneath the pass doesn't get the basket. Good shot attempt there for uh, Ishpeming's Chad Asgard. That's the one he made all day against Olivet, but it didn't fall that time. So it'll be Lakeview to inbound it. Lakeview with a blue and yellow and the sky blue and white for Ishpeming in the white shirts. Underneath shot, no. And out of bounds, it'll be Lakeview to retain possession. Not a, bad, not a bad job by Lakeview. Attacking the pressure, you always want to attack full court pressure, try to score, but you got to do it intelligently. And when it's not there, you pull it out and work your offense. And there's a momentary turnover, and then a full-time turnover here. This should result in at least a little layup, and the penny is up and good by Jason Charbonneau. He now has five, and it's eight to three. You know, I can see right now, this game for uh, Lakeview is going to depend on how well they're able to take care of the ball, because it looks like they're going to get pressure the entire time. I'm Tim Stout. Greg Kelser is with me this afternoon from the Jack Breslin Student Event Center. This is the Class C State Championship game, the second of four today. And these are two teams that have won state titles before, Ishpeming in Class B in 1950, and for Lakeview in Class C back in 1957, Gregory. So somebody's going to update its championship register today. How about the lob? The feed was good. It certainly the, was. But the tip wasn't there by Brett Myers, and it's out of bounds and Ishpeming will retain possession. You can see that this was set up very well and going through the back door. Now this pass is right on the money, but it was mishandled there by 54. That was Myers. Oh, he almost got your uh, your autograph right there. <laughs> uh, Jason Lawson came over to say hi to Greg. Should have tipped the ball to him there. Good hustle by Jason Lawson of Ishpeming. Good shot of him. He's a 5'9 junior. Now you played at Henry Ford in Detroit, Gregory. You never got this far, did you? Never got this far. Nope. nope. You lost to the team that did, though. <laughs> Won the national college title. Couldn't do it in the high school ranks. Uh, which just goes to show you how special it is. And it uh, is a good basket there by David Skorka. This is a young man we pointed out uh, early in the telecast today. He's got to have a big game, and that was a good shot. Makes it 8-5 to five now. Lakeview pulls within three. See, man-to-man -man pressure being applied right now by Lakeview. It'll follow up off the glass, and that one's up and good by Brett Myers. That's his first two today, and it's 10 to 5, Ishpeming. That's nice. nice pass on the break, and up and good. Nice play, and Brock Place gets the layup, and it's 10 7. Brock Place came down that time as the trailer on the play, and that was an, a great extra pass that time. Now that's attacking full court pressure intelligently. That's looking to score. That's getting an easy opportunity. They like that high lob. Here's Asgard. Again, that's a play he likes to score on. And it's out of bounds, and it's going to go back to Ishpeve. Hematites have never trailed here in the first quarter. Now 10-7. And here's our first substitution of the game for Lakeview coming in, number 44, Jeremy Thompson. His brother plays on this team, Chris Thompson. So the brothers are on the floor now. All right, Greg, let's see now. Did he just get hacked out of bounds here somehow? Actually, that was the uh, fast break opportunity off the pressure, and good job by Lakeview. The one thing uh, we'll have to pay attention to, and that's the tenacity off the offensive glass being demonstrated by Ishpeming. I mean, they're slopping up some shots, but they're going to the offensive glass, and they're getting second opportunities. So now we have brothers on the floor here for Lakeview. Jeremy Thompson, 44, and Chris Thompson, 30. Jeremy is the younger of the two. He's a junior. And Ishpeming has the ball back now trying to add to its 10-7 lead. Good look at the benches here. Nice uh, logo on the floor. 1995, the state high school basketball finals, the culmination of another great three-week tournament, the 70th, sponsored by the Michigan High School Athletic Association. All right, the, on the point, Jason Lawson in. Up and good. Nice move by Jason Lawson. That's five for him, and it's called the seven. You know, you can be a very dangerous offensive player when you can put it on the floor, create some space for yourself, and then come up with a jump shot. That was very nice by Lawson. 
You know, a lot of guys just cannot shoot off the dribble. They gotta have the feet set, and they've gotta have time to get it off. And a whistle and a foul inside, and that'll go against Ishpeming. And that's uh, Brett Myers, and that's his second personal third team foul on Ishpeming, and we'll see at the line Brock Place. Brock Place, according to his coach, is an awesome clutch player. According to Mike Schreiber, the Lakeview coach, he hit two free throws at the end of the game with five seconds to go in the semifinals to beat Flint Hammity. And his coach says, Gregory, that uh, uh, this kid here, uh, Brock Myers, or excuse me, Brock Place, has scored the final points in key games for his team 12 times this season. Yeah, I read that. You know, he he's the one guy that will have the ball if this game is close. Missing his free throws now, but under three minutes to go, he's uh, an 80% free throw shooter or better. A little lefty. A little lefty. And a little short on both of them, but uh, the rebound comes back to the Lakeview Wildcats, whose only loss this season was to Alma 65-59. And on the turnover, that's four of them now for the Wildcats. Ishpeming goes the other way. They handle the zone defense by Ishpeming about one out of every three times. And the double team kicks the ball out of bounds. A turnover, and it'll go back to Lakeview, and Ishpeming stays right at that end of the floor to apply the press. See, a lot of presses, Gregory, in high school basketball, don't you? You really do, because, you know, it's so important to take care of the basketball, and if you can get a team thinking as they bring the ball up the floor and it kind of throws them out of their offensive continuity. It disrupts their flow and that's certainly the case right now. Lakeview really hasn't been able to get into any type of comfort, comfort level offensively. Okay, so we're swimming so far just two turnovers from the quarter and that's another three-pointer for Jason Lawson who now has eight points and two three-pointers. Well, I think if you're going to help defensively, maybe you need to shade the side that Lawson's on because he's nailed a couple of those now and he looks very comfortable shooting the ball. This is the biggest lead for the Hematites, 15 to seven, and they're off to a great start here this afternoon. What luck pass inside for the basket of the Hematites are up by 10. Chad Asgard, his first two, and a great pass from Jason Lawson. Timeout on the floor called by the Lakeview Wildcats. One of your sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. Whether they live on the farm, in the country, the suburbs, or downtown, Farm Bureau Insurance serves them all. Life, home, retirement, auto, business. We're making your future more predictable. Farm Bureau Insurance. Farm Bureau Insurance. Everybody out there! It's not because teachers don't talk about it. It's not because I've never had a chance. It's not because I don't see it on TV. It's not because I don't know how. It's not because my parents would go crazy. It's not because I don't think about it all the time. It's not because of pressure from him. It's just because we don't. It's up to you when you choose to have sex, even when you choose to wait. Okay, Gregory, the Ishpeming Hematites have now built up a 10-point lead. You know, it's not unusual to see teams in big games like this have to go through a feeling out process when the game starts. Well, Lakeview is going through that feeling out process. It's obvious that Ishpeming got, their, got themselves ready to play in the locker room because they look not nervous at all. Ishpeming is the champion of the Mid-Peninsula Conference. They had 12 conference games, they won them all, and they're shooting seven out of 12 here in the early going, and Lawson's hit all three of his shots so far. So a big run for the Hematites, who now lead it 17 to seven. What Ishpeming is doing is flying the full court pressure and then settling back into a zone if they cannot get the turnover. And that'll be a turnover unless it's a steal, and it is a turnover. Over and back is the call, and the Hematites will get it back. You know, you got to feel a little bit for Ishpeming, Gregory, because they were the runner-up for the state title here in 89, 90, and 92, got to the final game, couldn't win it, and now they got another chance today. They look like they are dead set on, on breaking that streak of bad luck because, I mean, it's just no nervousness. They are ready to play. They seem very confident out on the floor. They've got a nice balance inside and outside offensively. And, and this guy, you've got to cover him. That looks good. 
got to get a man on him. Jason Lawson with three threes. He's four for four, 11 points in the first quarter, and a whistle and a foul is called on him there, and that's the best news Lakeview's had in some time because that's his second foul. The only thing that knock him out of the game is foul trouble. That didn't make his coach Jerry Racine happy at all. No, because he's got to make a decision right now with a minute 15 to go in this first quarter. Do you leave him in there and run the chance of him getting the third foul? And there's the steal. And Lawson nearly got the third foul. Lakeview's had a lot of trouble with that defensive pressure. I think you take him out. I mean, you love his shooting. You love his offensive presence on the floor. But you don't want to lose him to foul trouble and have, have to have him sit. Well, I'll tell you what. They're letting him play. That looks good. And it wouldn't miss by much. He just spots up on the same spot. Right? We must have put a little X out there. Well, you know, he can shoot the standstill, but he showed us earlier that he can also put it on the floor. Loss is very talented offensively. All right, inside, Skorka is fouled. David Skorka draws the fouls. They double-teamed him, but fouled him that time. So Ishpeming is running into some foul trouble, and that's Jason Charbonneau with his fifth now, or his first, fifth team foul. And you'll see the double team. They know they got to keep this guy in check. Well, Skorka, at six feet, eight inches tall, he's got to be a big target in there. He, along with Bees, they've got to make themselves available on the inside. And when the ball comes inside, they got to have strong hands. Don't bring it down so the little guys can grab it. Keep well, it up high. Lakeview has not committed a foul here in the first quarter. The first five fouls of the game, all against Ishpeming, but Ishpeming leads 20 to 7. And they've been making the turnovers Lakeview has, and that's what's killed them. And you know what? Many of these turnovers are unforced. That was just an errant pass thrown right into the hand of the defense. In the corner for three, and that one's up and good by Jason Charbonneau. This team has five three-pointers here in the first quarter and a big 16-point lead. And that's probably going to be it here in the first quarter because they're unaware of the clock, and we have come to the end of the first quarter of the Class C State title game. It's all Ishpeming. Ishpeming 23, Lakeview 7. This is the MHSAA on pass. Back again at the Breslin, Rick Berkey along with Marshall Thomas and the Hematites come out rock solid featuring some long range bombs. You know, they've got a team concept in every sense of the word. Very difficult to, uh, to guard because who do you key on? All throughout the year, they've had a number of guys who have scored, and they've had sco uh, scored at least, what, five or six threes in that first quarter. And, and, and they're all from different players just about. Lakeview with some good interior strength, but so far haven't been able to utilize it that much. Now down to the floor again, Tim and Greg. Okay, well, Lakeview was 12 down in the first half, Gregory, in the uh, semifinal game with Flint Hammond. They're 16 down now, so at least they're used to this anyway. Well, you know, Marshall Thomas is exactly right. With so many weapons, it's very hard to key on one guy. As we mentioned, Ishpeming, eight guys averaging between five and 12 points. What has to happen, Lakeview has got to play each guy honestly. Each person is going to have to take it upon himself to guard his man so that they don't, so that they, they don't have to help and leave anyone open. All right, Shane Bees on the follow as five of his teams now, and, and uh, that's a putback which Lakeview desperately needed. Turnovers have hurt Lakeview. They have eight. Uh, Ishpeming has two. And Ishpeming has scored ten points off turnovers, and Lakeview hasn't been able to get any yet. I think that basket just a moment ago by Lakeview snapped a 13 to nothing run by Ishpeming. Yes, it did. It was a long run, a long drought for the last five minutes of that first quarter by the Wildcats. But they've snapped it now, and we'll see whether or not they can play a little better defense. But you wondered about Jason Lawson with those two fouls. He's still out there on the play. You can see him at the bottom of your screen here. He, he just waiting for somebody to throw it to him so he can launch it again. And there's a whistle and a foul. That's the first foul now. Finally called against Lakeview. Jeremy Thompson picks it up. You bring up a good point, though, and we talked about it in our open. Lakeview was down significantly to Olivet, or excuse me, to Flint Hamity. 12, in fact. They trail by 14 right now. They don't get too upset, too nervous when they get down. They just work harder and get back into most of these games. Okay, there quickly is the second foul against Lakeview. And that one, is, is it score or B? Now Shane Bees gets it. So that's on two team fouls now on Lakeview. Shane Bice has his first one. Lakeview down the floor, up and good. Nice basket by Chris Thompson. 
And that'll make it now 23 to 11. Now they are down 12. So now they are absolutely used to this from the semifinal. Did you see Chris Thompson, the way he jetted up the floor that time? I mean, he got up the floor quickly, wasn't worrying about contact, didn't try to play for a foul, just went straight to the basket with it. In the lane, whistle foul. And that'll go against Lakeview Shane Buys. And quickly, he has his second. And that's three quick team fouls on Lakeview in the first minute and a half of the second quarter. And this could be critical. You see that? It looked almost like a good block, but obviously there must have been some contact down low. Buys did not like the call. Chad Asgard will be on the line now. That could be significant because with two fouls on this big guy, He's the one that really helps Skorka inside with the rebounding. They lose him, they lose strength on the glass, and we know that Ishpemin can be very tough off the window. Well, we're going to have to identify all these Ishpemin players who've just come into the game. Chad Asgard, who is only uh, a 48% free throw shooter now, is on the line to shoot two. Well, yeah. that means you ought to make one out of two. Goes by his average, you'll miss this one. He Asgard with three, 24 to 11 now. 14 for Ishpeming is Mark Delangelo, uh, who is on the floor. 20 is Benjamin Sager. Oh, a tip almost made it, not quite. And so now Lakeview 13 down with the basketball here with some brand new Ishpeming hematite players on the floor. Brett Myers, 54, is still in the game in the middle on defense. That shot was away, and so Ishpemin goes back on the attack. 20 is Benjamin Sager. Inside, little drive. Nice little shot inside by Chad. Mark Delangelo they give it to, and that's his first two off the bench, and it's now 26 to 11. And now late is Chris Thompson. Should have had that one. Couldn't get it to go on the short little... Bouncer off the glass, here's Asgard, and it's stripped away nicely. Good recovery by Chris Thompson of uh, Lakeview, and so Ishpeming will have the ball back. Thompson made a save that time, but still the concern. Ishpeming beating Lakeview down the floor repeatedly. What you have is Lakeview, four guys trying to go to the offensive glass, get a rebound, and when they don't get that rebound, they're not getting back defensively. And a good steal by Lakeview. Thompson lays it up and in. Chris Thompson, a couple of good hustles, four points in the second quarter for him, and it's a 13-point game. He might be the fastest guy on the floor. Yep. He's won two foot races so far. Trying to get Ishpeming out of its rhythm just a little bit. Now they've got Jason Lawson out of there, but they like to fire the three, and that's Mark Delangelo. Right off the bench, five points for Delangelo, and it's raining threes for Ishpeming here in the first half. They've got six of them already. Wrong guy. I'll tell you, the colleges don't make six in the first ten minutes of these games anymore. Well, the thing about, the thing that's so impressive with Ishpeming, I mean, they got all these threes, and they're getting them from a variety of guys. Uh, very difficult to identify who can hurt you out there when four or five guys can. As Mark Delangelo steps down. He played about 90 seconds and got five big points. And that's again a 16-point game, a 29 to 13. And we have some shock on the face of Brett Myers, who just got his third personal foul, much to the dismay of his coach. See, now they go smaller now. They'll have to get Myers out of there. He's six feet, six inches tall. They'll come in with number 42. Jason Argall, six feet, two inches tall. So now you would expect guys like Skorka and Shane Byes now to really be able to go to work inside. They're going to have a significant height advantage. Jeremy Thompson inbounds it. There's the three from Brock Place. And Lakeview will hustle and keep it here. 16 down with 4.55 to go in the half. Lakeview needs to get a good shot here in the half court game. And they're tough to come by. They've been getting a lot of theirs in transition. There's a football atmosphere to this one underneath. As you can see, and Ishpeming's got numbers now, four on one. They're going to continue to have numbers because, as you can see, when the ball goes up for Lakeview, they've got four or five guys packed into the paint area trying to fight for that offensive rebound. All Ishpeming has to do is get a clean rebound, and they're going to run, and they're going to have an advantage. All right, Jeremy Thompson has his second. That's 14 fouls on Lakeview now. 436 to play and on the line for Ishpeming is Benjamin Sager off the bench, a 6'1 senior for the Hematites. Benjamin Sager is only a 60% free throw. He's only been in the line 15 times. 
I mean, saving, good there. They're saving their best for the tournament. Yeah. It's nice when you can go right to your bench and get six quick points there as it is done. Timeout on the floor called by Ishpeming. 4.36 to play. It is Ishpeming 30, Lakeview 13. Timeout. One of your sponsors this afternoon is the Michigan Abstinence Lakeview. Partnership. Lakeview timeout. There is second. Tip Stout along with Greg Kelser at the sold out Jack Breslin Student Event Center. Is there anything more exciting than high school basketball, Greg? At least for these people there isn't. That's right, not today. You know, we talked about Lakeview's tendency to come back, but you know, Tim, at some point you have to concern yourself with the, uh, the size of the hole you dig. 17 points right now threatening to go higher. Lakeview may be letting this team Ishpeming get too far out of range. Well, that's certainly a concern to Mike Schreiber, the Lakeview coach whom you just saw. It's a good shot of Benjamin Sager here. And the official now is going to check here with the uh, score table. There's a good shot of Barbara Beckett from Traverse City. Again, if you joined us late, she is the first woman ever to officiate a boys state final championship game. And she's making friends fast. Uh, they got lost there on the count. He shot one free throw, and then they called the timeout, so he's only got one left. Is that the way you remember it? That's the way I remember it. <laughs> I remember you had just said that he was uh, he had only attempted 15 yeah. free throws all year and yeah. shot a nice yeah. I think nothing I but netter. Yeah, I think I remember saying that, too. <laughs> uh, but they didn't hear us say that, though. Now, we've got a little question here on who's in, who's out. Is somebody bleeding or something? Well, they're going to look at Chad Asgard over here. Uh, at the bench, and he may need. Yeah, he's got some blood on his knee, so he'll. Uh, they're gonna have to bring in someone else there. Jason Charbonneau will come back into the game for a minute. This is the longest two free throws you will see shot in some time. There's a hematite right there. You knew that from uh, from uh, what cl archaeology class, whatever class, uh, that a rocks class, sedimentary rock or something, something like that. There's, we could have. We might be parking on some of it. Who knows? <laughs> We haven't seen too many of those thrown up at the basket here in this first half by Ishpeming either. They've been hot. They've made a lot of what they've shot up there. 11 out of 17 so far. Benjamin Sager now. So he's one for two, and it's a 17-point game, and that's the largest lead. Good look at uh, the Breslin Center here. Opened six years ago. Already it's that old. $43 million multi-purpose facility here at Michigan State University. Happy to have the state high school boys finals here now. I would say with real estate appreciation, this building's got to be worth about, what, $65 million now? Well, I see Wisconsin's <laughs> going to build an 18,000-seat arena for $75 million. So that's 3,000 more seats. Here's the shot going up again. Still no interior activity until that for offensive Lakeview, rebound for Lakeview. And Jeremy Thompson has his third foul now for Lakeview. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold, hold We'll check that again. Uh, 34 has start at the line. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jason Charbonneau has his second. Okay, there we go. And on the line now for Lakeview is Tony Howes, who gets to 225-pound senior. And Tony makes it 30-14. to 14. A lot of left-handers on uh, Lakeview's team. This is the all-lefty team. And the lefty just did graze the rim on that one, so it's out of bounds. It'll go back to Ishpeming. 30 to 14 now is our score. It was 23 to 7 after one quarter. If you joined us late, Ishpeming went on a 13-point run at the end of that first quarter. And has put a lead on the board that Lakeview has not been able to stop. Although Lakeview's still playing awfully hard here. The turnovers have really killed the Wildcats at key times. Hey, Thompson, maybe he needs to think about just outrunning the defense, taking it himself, because he's made two ill-advised passes in transition, and he's made two free throws. Just take it himself. All right, now you see Jason Lawson back on the floor with those two fouls. Shot from the baseline is up and good by Benjamin Sager. Off the bench, he has three. The bench has given Ishpeming eight points of its 32. Down to 3.37 to play. Stay with us at halftime. We'll have special features here on this championship basketball day at the Michigan High School Athletic Association Tournament. Skorka is fouled underneath. And I believe we'll um, let's make sure we got it right. Ishpeming foul 44. Charbonneau. Jason Charbonneau has his second. 
And so David Skorka, who Gregory told you about at the top of the telecast this afternoon, is a big guy to stop. He's averaging 10-3. He goes to the line so far, just one field goal, Gregory. I am really impressed with the ball movement of Ishpeming. I mean, they've got several guys touching it, a little penetration there, and a kick out for a jumper. That's how basketball is played. It's very simple when you move the basketball. Now, you mentioned Skorka, another lefty, yep. just knocked down the free throw. To me, he's just not active enough inside. He's got to be more convincing in his desire to get the basketball. If he can get it, I think he can do some damage inside. So the score is doubled for Ishpeming at 32 to 16. The Hematites here looking to win their first state titles in 45 years. They won it in 1950. They beat the press and get the layup. No, they don't get the layup. They get the layup. They just miss it. Yeah, they got the layup and missed it. Jason Argall wishes he could have that one back, and he took a pounding on the floor at the same time. Once again, though, that's attacking pressure, looking to score, not just get it over the timeline and set your offense up. And you're right. He'd love to have this one. I mean, that was wide open, but he went a little hard off the glass but had the presence of mind, Tim, to go back and get it. Jason Main has that foul. That is his first from the corner for three. And that was Lawson finally missing a shot here this afternoon, and Lakeview's on the attack. And the just as they seem to have a little something going, they lose the ball, and the Hematites will get it back. Lakeview's got to keep that pressure on, though, and just make sure they cover up their basket. I think they need to start thinking about getting this deficit down to 10 by halftime. All right, so now Jason Lawson with a hand on the back. No call. Looking against the zone here for the shot they want. Appreciate the ball movement by Ishpeming. Already, each guy on the floor has touched the ball in this one possession. They really forced the defense to have to scramble and rotate. And Lakeview plays a lot of help defense, and that sets up some guys that are open to get the ball, like this guy right here, or this guy. But they cover up quickly if they can. And without a shot clock, Gregory. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, matter. That's helping them, especially. They can be as patient as, <coughs> excuse me, as they want to be. And that foul goes against Lakeview's Brock Place. And again, without that shot clock, they eventually just draw a foul. That's 16 fouls now on Lakeview. So one more will send Ishpeming into a one-on-one with 2.19 to go. Benjamin Sager will check in and Lawson with those two fouls. A key shooter, he sits down now, so perhaps it's not to get his third foul here in the first half. Skorka goes out for Lakeview and Tony Howes comes on. Now Ishpeming trying to equal its biggest lead, which has been 18 points. Good balance on this floor for Ishpeming. Underneath, there's Asgard around a couple of guys, and it doesn't quite bounce right for him. And then it's stolen right away, and that should be an easy one, and it is for Mark Delangelo off the bench for seven points. The thing that hurts so much on that play, Lakeview played about a minute and a half of defense that time. Finally got a rebound only to turn it right back over and give up the field goal and go down by 18 points. That foul is against Ishpeming. Barbara Beckett will make the call. And 42. To Tony House, I believe. Watch this clean theft right there. Oh, they don't come any easier. Argo hit second. That was a good job that time. One shot, bonus shot. Delangelo. Yeah, that one's good. That foul, by the way, was on Jason Argall, his second. So on the line, as you see, for the Wildcats is Brock is uh, is Brock Place, who has three and four. Hits them both. Now 34 to 18. But as Gregory says, for all the work Lakeview does, it's tough to build break into that lead. And had a perfect charge taken against Benjamin Sager. Think you got to be left-handed to play on the Lakeview basketball team? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it, it makes the layup lines a little more pronounced, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll start on the left side. 34 to 18. It's been about a 16-point margin for much of this game, no more than 18. Cut into it, and they do. That three-pointer is good by Brock Place. Seven for him now. And now it's a 13-point game. Keep that pressure up. Just make sure you protect your basket. 
try to force Ishpeming, the good passing team, into a tough shot, and then clean up on the rebound. I think that's what, Lake, uh, what Lakeview is thinking. There it is. Yeah, they swap that one away. And with a minute and eight seconds to go, Lakeview's going to get another chance here on offense to eat into that lead. They love to get it but down to single digits here before the half. From the corner, the place just misses. And it's a hot potato, and the win goes to Lakeview. See, they're more assertive now, and this is the most they've been in the entire half. And their crowd up and chanting, starting to sense a little momentum change here. Their crowd is into it to be sure, and there are a lot of Wildcats here today from the town of Lakeview. On the western side of the state, west central. Another skip pass, and they'll get, they'll get number 22 place a shot right there with the basketball. That one just avoided being picked off. And there's the three, and that isn't going to make it anywhere near. See, that was the pass. When it got that time to Thompson, one more pass over to Place, who had just hit the last three-pointer. Perhaps he could have got another one down. So Chris Thompson wishes he could have that shot over. Now we'll see if Ishbam is going to try to play for the last possession here. Nope. It's stolen away again. Lakeview gets another break. Oh, he's so quick. Thompson can't quite get the roll, but he's fouled. See, he shouldn't even he shouldn't think about passing it in transition. Just use your quickness. Get to the basket, get it up on the glass. And that's three fouls on Jason Argall. That's three players now for Ishpeming with three fouls. And Lawson has two and Charbonneau two and they're on a bench. How about that little change of direction? Acted as though he was going to go left and came back right all the time, keeping the ball in the left-hand dribble. I like, I like this little, little, little quick guy. But he can't get the free throw to go and then the whistle underneath. And that foul will go against Skorka, number 52, David Skorka, his first. And that's a tough break for the Wildcats. Thank you, foul 52, David Skorka. So we'll first. walk to the other end of the floor here. Skorka just a little bit long with the free throw. And so for Ishpeming now. Jason Argall. At the line, Jason Argall, a 6'2 junior. And Jason Argall has not scored yet today. And Lakeview now with another chance here in the final seconds of this first half. Stay with us at halftime. Rick Rookie will have all kinds of live features for you. In the first game, 55-46 in Class D, Holy Redeemer defeated Crystal Falls Forest Park. That's the Detroit Holy Redeemer. Thompson drives in, dumps it off, Skorka doesn't get it at the buzzer, and we have come to the end of the first half. It is Ishpeming 34, Lakeview 21. You're watching the MHSAA on pass. The Hematites with a 13-point lead over Lakeview's Wildcats, halftime of the Class C State Championship. Detroit Holy Redeemer already won a championship earlier today in Class D. You know, one of the areas of emphasis for the Michigan High School Athletic Association is educational excellence. And today, 24 of the state's top student athletes are being honored by the MHSAA and Farm Bureau Insurance with $1,000 college scholarships. For the presentation of the 1995 Scholar Athlete Awards, let's go to public address announcer Eric O. for Seth. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we direct your attention to center court for Larry Thomas, Executive Vice President of Farm Bureau Insurance, and Jack Roberts, Executive Director of the Michigan High School Athletic Association, will make a special presentation. The Michigan High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Award, underwritten by Farm Bureau Insurance, honors the top student athletes in 24 sports in which the association sponsors a postseason tournament. Each student will receive a $1,000 scholarship to be used at the Institute of Higher Learning of their choice. More information about the Scholar Athlete Award may be found in the special center section of your souvenir program. 
And now we present the Scholar Athlete Award Class of 1995. Carmen Kennedy, girls basketball, Detroit Renaissance. Matthew Bernard Debsky, Boys Cross Country, Gross Point South. <laughs> Melissa Ann Pline, Girls Cross Country, St. John's. <laughs> Matthew S. Kiefer, Football, Elkton Pigeon Bayport. Jason Frederick Keeler, Boys Golf, Lavonia Churchill. John P. McDonald, Boys Soccer, Flint Powers Catholic. Sarah M. Baker, Girls Swimming and Diving, Warren Fitzgerald. Janae Redman, Girls Tennis, Niles. Lee Palmer Kakady, Boys Basketball, North Muskegon. Jennifer M. Coles, Girls Competitive Cheer, Edwardsburg. <laughs> Jessica Schwartz, Girls Gymnastics, Grand Rapids Creston. Jillian Louise Gregory, Girls Skiing, Traverse City. Corbett Johnson Clenpay, Boys Swimming and Diving, Grand Blank. Andrea Jean Marie Johnson, Girls Volleyball, Frankfurt. Jeff Nadig, Wrestling, Celine. Jody J. Mitz, Baseball, Unionville Seabwing. Cindy Anderson, Girls Golf, Newberry. Soccer, Romeo. Elizabeth Ann Palmatier, softball, Claire. Perrine Shaw, boys tennis, Sterling Heights. Jeremiah David Powers, Boys Track and Field, Jonesville. One more. Sarah Yellow, Girls Track and Field, St. John's. Unable to attend today's ceremony, 
Brian Andrews play Ann Arbor Pioneer Ice Hockey and Courtney Janess Kingsford Boys Skiing. Let's have a big round of applause for the Scholar Athlete Award Class of 1995. Over 2,000 applicants for the Scholar Athlete Award. There's your winners. Congratulations to all of them as well as the regional finalists from across the area. Terrific program. Stay with us. One of your sponsors is True Value Hardware. Halftime of the Class C Championship tilt. You see the Hematites with a 13-point advantage over Lakeview Wildcats. Lakeview coming back, though, in the final couple minutes to get a little momentum into the locker room. In case you missed an announcement earlier, Barbara Beckett of Traverse City made MHSA history today as she is officiating this game. She's the first female official to work a state final game. She did work a couple of semifinals in 1992 and 94, so congratulations to Barbara. Stay with us, still more to come. Analysis Stats, one of your net sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. You're looking down on the Jack Breslin Events Center here at campus of Michigan State University and at the half, Ishpeming with a 13 point advantage over Lakeview here in the Class C finale. Rick Berkey along with Marshall Thomas, our day long guest analyst. Marshall, a varsity basketball coach at Saginaw High and we talked at the quarter break, Marshall, about uh, that uh, hematite squad. It came out firing from long range. And what's interesting, uh, I mean, it's impressive the way they shoot the ball, but the way they make that extra pass. Uh, quite often, they'll get a good look from three and pass it up for a better look. Very much. You know, they're very much everywhere, every, in every sense of the word a team. It doesn't really matter who scores for them. Everyone seems to be able to pass. Everyone seems to be able to dribble. They understand the game of basketball. But you know, that's why the game of ball is four quarters. Actually, in that second quarter, Lakeview actually outscored Ishmael. They themselves also aren't giving up, but that's why they're here in the state finals. I think that uh, run by Lakeview in the final minute and a half could turn out to be pivotal because they, you said they were playing better, but they weren't able to really make a big chunk off that scoreboard, that deficit, and they finally did there at the end. Very much so. Uh, they're very seemingly very, very competitive. But again, you, you had mentioned earlier, I think that their strength is on the inside. And Ishmael has been able to kind of uh, hold them down from their inside from playing a zone defense. While on the opposite end, Ishmael, their real strength is on the outside, which has actually made Lakeview have to come out of a zone, which they started in, and go to a man-to-man -man because they, they just couldn't cover the whole floor in the zone. They have been able to get the ball inside. They've been Lakeview a little better in that second quarter. In just a moment, we'll get a chance to, to look at some of the action. But uh, here we look at it right now. A nice give and go inside to place. So that was a good uh, fast break bucket there for Brock Place and the Wildcats. Let's check, check out the scoring leaders in that first half right now. Well, before we do that, check a little. Here's Jason Lawson, one of those long-range downtown bombs, which gets nothing but the bottom of the net, as they say. I tell you what, too, though. Anytime a team is relying on outside shooting, they can be, they can have some trouble. So we'll just have to look and see what happens, because they're going to need to stay hot from the outside or either change up and come to the inside and do some scoring. Let's look at the numbers in that first half overall and see. We know that, uh, again, the, the shooting advantage went to Ishpeming and you see 59% which is even more impressive when you consider where many of their shots came from. Definitely outside that three point area. Rebounds even though 11 apiece turnovers uh, fairly close at 11 to 9 so Lakeview still not able to take advantage of that height differential that they have going into the game right now but as we mentioned they're doing a better job of it in the second quarter. I'm sure and I'm sure the coach is talking about that at halftime in terms of making some types of adjustments and I still think this is, this game is, is far from being over, even though we've got two more quarters, far from being over. But we'll, again, we'll just have to wait and see what, what adjustments they make in this second half. Lakeview coaching staff not overly happy probably with going six out of 11 from the free throw line because, as you know, if they're going to have a chance to get back in this, they're probably going to need some points at the line. Very much so. Generally speaking, too, though, a team that scores from the inside a lot will uh, take either the inside shot or the opportunity of going to the free throw line. And, but going there, they're going to have to make a good percentage of them. Lakeview down by 13. What are they telling their players? 
well, right now they're just telling them to stick with the game plan and just keep going. I would be telling mine, you know, that with those guys shooting those outside shots and they actually did cool off in the second quarter, that I, I don't think that they can uh, really keep that outside type shooting up, shooting 58%. One of the hardest things for the Hematites, of course, is trying to hang on to that lead and not get uh, complacent and making too many passes right now. But they'll see if they can do it. So you've got a 13-point lead, and we've got a whole half of action to come here in the Class C finale. Stay with us. And this is the MHSAA on Pass. of the MHSAA Finals is made possible by Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award, True Value Hardware, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports are Winners program, the Michigan Abstinence Partnership, and the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Michigan. Always a great pick. Always Coca-Cola. Tim Stout with Greg Kelser back here at the Jack Breslin Center. We're all set for the second half here. Ishpeming 34, Lakeview 21. Can Lakeview do it, Greg? Greg? You know, to back up what Marshall Thomas said, hey, two quarters to go, there's plenty of basketball, and there seemed to be a little momentum change late in that second quarter. Lakeview started to get some things done. Keep in mind, these teams are switching sides of the court. That well, can be very disconcerting to an outside shooting team. I agree. It'll be very interesting to see if Ishpeming can keep the outside attack up. Well, Chad Asgard gets his fifth point, 36-21. One reason is for me shooting so well and getting shots like that at times. So it's a 15-point game here. Ishwaming has led the entire game so far this afternoon on a gorgeous day in East Lansing. Good to have you with us wherever you are around the state of Michigan watching on pass the 70th Annual State High School Basketball Championships. What Lakeview cannot do is take as long to get involved in the action as they did in that first half. They do that already down by 13, now 15, now 17. It's going to be very difficult to win. Mark Delangelo off the bench today has nine points now. Biggest lead has been 18, so it's now 17. That's just what Lakeview did not want to have happen. Yeah, I mean, if there's a spurt that's going to happen right at the beginning of the half, if you're down, then you got to be the team making that spurt. Lakeview has allowed Ishpeming to come out and score the first four points. They get a turnover here. It could go up even farther than that. It's going to be very difficult as time starts to wind down. They call a push-off on Shane Byes. That's his third personal foul, first team foul, second half. 6.55 now on the clock here in the third quarter. Lakeview with just one loss this season, a six-pointer to Alma, but this Ishmael club came to play today. Hey, forget changing ends of the court. So far, hasn't made a difference. Ishmael looks to be very hot. The team is more ready to play right now. That one, Jason Cherubino for Ishmael, Chris Thompson the other way for Lakeview. Back the other way. Hey, tell them the, the, the halftime warm-ups end up. There's just nothing but layups here. Ishmael makes Brett Myers gets his fourth point. There's three the other way, and that bricks off out of bounds. And it'll go to Lakeview. The team rebound there, 6.18 to go. So that's just a bad decision in the open court. Early opportunity. They're very fortunate to maintain possession, Lakeview. Now, don't forget this afternoon at 4 o'clock as you look at an anxious uh, Lakeview bench. Mike Schreiber over there. That shot doesn't go. And off the glass and in. A good putback by Brock Place, who now has nine points now. And it's 43 to 25. I'll tell you what, the pace of this game is still huge. And there's a lot of contact, as you can hear. Hey, he got off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> to retrieve the basketball, go set up in the three-point territory, and knock it down. Jason Charbonneau has four threes, 14 points. You know, the Hematites, two juniors, Jason Charbonneau and Jason Lawson, have seven threes between them here this afternoon. 
Uh, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, the MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals will continue with the A title game between Detroit Pershing and Flint Northern. We'll wrap up things tonight then at 7.30 with the B championship game. Gregory and I will give you Detroit Country Day and East Grand Rapids. So two big games left. The D game earlier today, it was 55-46 to Detroit Holy Redeemer defeating Crystal Falls Forest Park. This is Brock Place, who's missed his first one. You know, on the Ishpeming roster, Gregory, four kids named Jason, and they're all juniors, and apparently they are going to all shoot the threes, too. Right now, Ishpeming is close to the state championship final game record for three-pointers. They got nine, and the record is 11 in one game. And they've been just, it's been raining threes here this afternoon. They got eight. They got eight so far. And 11 is the record. Thank you, foul 30, Thompson. That's Chris Thompson's first foul. Take a look. There it is, Thompson just trying to make something happen. You know, this Ishpeming, Ishpeming team obviously well drilled and attacking pressure. They just they don't turn the ball over very much and they get good shots out of it. Summer layups, summer jump shooters. They really make you stretch your defense. I believe Jason Maine has that foul. That would be his second 20 point game. 20-point game, 5.24 to play in the third. Again, an enormous collision underneath. And no call. <laughs> They're letting him play. They're letting him play. Inside, a little scoop doesn't go. Asker Boyle, man, man, a lot of these kids are football players. And it is a physical game underneath. You know, in the first half, Skorka, there's the layup attempt right there by, by place. But in the first half of Lakeview, Skorka and Byers had four shots combined. Now, for guys that are tough inside, it's just not enough looks. Jason Lawson, 13 points for him. And again, the two juniors today, Lawson and Charbonneau, between them have 27 of Ishpeming's 48 points. So this is their biggest lead. And Lakeview says, oh, we got to figure something else out. This isn't working. 4.47 to go, third quarter of the C final game. It's Ishpeming 48, Lakeview 26. One of your sponsors this afternoon is the Michigan Abstinence Partnership. Tip style with Greg Kelser back here at a jam-packed, sold-out Breslin Arena. First sellout at a final session. Here's that enormous collision right there. And watch, right there. Watch how he gets up off the floor. That's Charbonneau. He's going to get off the floor and say, okay, hey, no problem. We'll take it from the three-point trajectory. Bang. And we've done a few games in here this winter. We haven't seen too many like that. And oh my, is absolutely right. <laughs> and this from being said, we need a little punctuation on that. And they've got Uper Power here this afternoon. UP teams are the first two title games. And two more to go. Now we'll see. You can see from the half so far, it's been all Ishpeming, and finally, Shane Byes gets one to fall. That's seven for him, and it's a 20-point game. Well, Byes, Byes got it inside and was able to use his strength and get in there to get a basket. Now, that's just his third shot attempt of the game, and I thought that he, along with Skorka, would provide a bigger presence inside for Lakeview, but it just has not happened. Okay, that foul goes against Lakeview's Chris Thompson. That's two on him now. Lakeview gets a good steal. Brock plays. See, can they come back in the last 12 minutes of this game and overcome a 20-point lead? It's been done in these games before. This buys again. You can hurt a zone defense if you have movement inside and you can be crisp with the passing. Now, Byers got away with the an error that time because the first thing he did, he turned, he put it on the floor as opposed to perhaps just going right up with the shot. Mark Delangelo gets his first personal foul now. That's a second team foul on Ishmael. So the Wildcats of Lakefield. Can't get anything this time down the floor. And it's the main, and that's an offensive foul, or is it a defense? No, it's offense. I think that's on Ishpeming. Am I right on that? Yeah, that's on Ishpeming. He doesn't believe Jason Sherbin doesn't believe it. That's three personal fouls. So Lakeview will inbound the basketball, and that'll be Brock Place to put it into play. 
They collided it. You know, I mean, it was a good cause right in front of us here. Now Lakeview against the press has got to get something going here. We'll talk with the winners and watch the medal presentations at the end of this game, so stay with us when it's over. And at the moment, it's going to be a big UP celebration. And a whistle and a foul, and that may go against Lakeview. It does, and Chris Thompson may have gotten a charge. No, it's going to go, it's on Lakeview. Lakeview foul, 52. David Skorka, his second. So the fouls are piling up. Five team fouls against Lakeview here. 340 to play in the third, and then Ishtermann throws it away. Jerry Racine in his fourth year. His first year here, his team went 26-1. The only loss was in the state championship game. And that was a tough one in 92 to Detroit to Morris, 54-43. There's Pies again. Keep in mind, he caught it, he turned, he shot it. He didn't put it on the floor, giving himself a chance to get it stripped. They nine. need to continue looking at him. And yeah, nine points for Shane Byes now. And they've got a break here, three on one if they can convert. And they will convert. That's Brock Place. And it's now 48-32. They've cut it to 16. And then a backcourt foul on Brock Place. See, he reached in. He got a little uh, impatient that time. What? Lakeview has to do is keep that pressure up. I would put Skorka down by the basket because each time they leave the basket unguarded, they pay for it because Ishpeming's a good passing team. That was the layup a moment ago by Brock. There's still plenty of time. You don't have to lose your patience. You don't have to reach in and commit the silly fouls. This telecast is a copyright production of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and Cast Sports. No reproduction or retransmission of the pictures or accounts. Uh, this game may take place without the express permit, uh, written permission of the MHSAA and pass. You know, I don't know that I see, I've seen a high school team that passes the ball as well as Ishpeme. I mean, each guy, good passer, all of them catch it well. Thank you, foul. And that is so very important when you're going against pressure defense. If you can pass and catch it well, each guy on the floor, then pressure defense will not hurt you. Shane buys now with four fouls, and he has to take a seat on the bench here, and he's not happy. No, he's not happy because he is not a happy Wildcat right now. Oh, no. He's not happy, Tim, but he got in poor position that time trying to block a shot from behind, and that's difficult to do. Even if you get it sometimes cleanly, the officials are going to still blow the whistle because they're conditioned to think that you just can't do that from behind. Now, Chad Asgard now with six. That's a lot lower than the 26 he had against Nicolette. But his team is giving him so much help from three-point range today. 49-32 now. Skorka isn't even looking to score. Put back off the glass and it goes for Brock Place. Brock's doing all he can to keep his team in it. 14 for Place, seven here in the third quarter, and it's a 15-point game. 22 was the largest lead in this quarter for Ishpeming. That three is blocked by Skorka, and then the putback goes up and in. It's been that kind of day for Lakeview. Brett Myers gets it. He yeah. has six. You get the block on the three-point shot, but you can't get the cleanup, and that really hurts. I think that if Lakeview can get this thing down to 10 going into the fourth quarter, that's Brock Place sifting inside once again. But, Tim, if they can get it down to 10, that's manageable. If this thing is still up 14, 15 points going into the fourth quarter, that is very, very difficult to overcome. Chris Thompson has his third personal foul now for Lakeview. It's a foul-filled, contact-filled final game, as you might expect. The kids have gone all this way to the final game. They sure want to win, obviously. Go this far. Nice move there. Well, the pump fake set it all up for place. Chris Thompson out. Tony House comes back in. So now on the line for the Hematites, Jason Lawson, only a junior. He had three three-pointers in the first quarter among his 11 points to set the tone for this game. He gets the bonus. Had the three three-pointers, 11 points in all. Would have had more than that, but foul trouble forced him to the bench for a while. 14 for Lawson, 15 for Lawson, and it's a 17-point lead now for the Hematites. They will not allow Lakeview to get anything sustained. Lakeview might get a couple of baskets in a row, but then just as quickly, Ishpeming will come down and get a couple of themselves. 150 to play here in the third quarter. They run their offense here. That gets place open for three. 
He's going down fighting. I mean, he is out there swinging back, Jack. He's got 12 points on his own here in the third quarter and comes up with a steal, and he's looking for it again. And there's a, and there's a block, and he'll go to the line. Well, this Lakeview crowd has come alive here. The game is a 14-point game. They need to have a few more guys adopt his attitude and tenacity. I mean, he's, he's seemingly saying, if I'm going to lose, look at him. He comes in and just takes the ball away. If I'm going to lose, I'm going to bruise somebody up as well. Mark Delangelo gets the foul. This place will come unglued now if Lakeview can score here. That's for three. from 22 to 11. But they keep hurting themselves by committing the silly fouls when you don't have to. Now this is going to give Ishpeming a chance to come down the floor, shoot a free throw, and they're shooting the free throws quite well. Well, maybe they just want to rest. <laughs> it was worth a foul to walk once. <laughs> well, hey, in this type of game, you want to rest, you raise your hand and you get the coach to get you out of the game. And not many of these guys look winded for all because they're kids. They're in shape. They're young. Chris Thompson comes back in, and Maine, who just committed that foul, goes out. But he's hustling. And on the line now is Mark Delangelo off the bench today, has nine points, and this will be a one-and-one. It's only an 11 point game now. He gets the bonus. In this quarter now, Ishbeming from the line is at four out of five free throws, and of course that will help tremendously here. Let's see what happens now. A little run right now by Lakeview, but each time they have been cut off by Ishbeming. Let's see if it happens again. Lock place at 12 point third quarter, and that one he'll get back. And he has 19 for the game now. Brock Place is only averaging 9.4 a game. And again, he hit those two free throws with five seconds to go in a semi to win it for his team. And as Gregory says, he's trying to bring them back. Nothing there. And, and then he gets a block out of bounds. It's a clean block. And so Wishpeming will get it back. This guy's at both ends of the floor. I think it's a foul. Yeah, they're going to call, call a foul on him. Well, now he's got three. Well, he's hustling. I mean, he's doing all that he can do, and that was the correct call. I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> Looked like there was going to be some contact, but it wasn't very apparent on the uh, replay. Jason Lawson is on the line now. That's his first appearance on the line today. Only a 150-pound junior. really miss it was so bad it nearly went to one of his own guy it's gonna be a travel call and it's the right call Thompson went down with the basketball and then he rolled with it 54 seconds to play here in the third quarter I'm Tim Stout with Greg Kelser here at the Jack Breslin Center in East Lansing you're watching the class C that's proof you, excuse me that's proof you don't have to be on your feet to travel oh. He's going to get it the ball back. Oh, that'll be an easy one. And it is for Jeremy Thompson, who finally scores today. His first two. It's an 11-point game again. Well, Lakeview's going to have one of the big comebacks if they can pull this one off this afternoon. Down by 22 in the third. They're down by 11 in the third in the final seconds here. It's going to set up a big eight minutes, Greg. Should be very exciting because there's definitely been a momentum swing here. Ishpeming trying to win its first state title in 45 years. And won it in Class B in 1950. Whistle, offensive. No, they call a push before the shot. No basket. And that's Tony Howes, I believe, for Lakeview that's going to get caught. He did. His first. So Ishpeming's going to be shooting a lot of free throws the rest of the way. His first be interesting here, Gray, to see who gets in foul trouble, who can make the free throws, and how much of an impact it's going to be in the final quarter. Right at this point, Lakeview has won this quarter by two points. Yeah, Lakeview. If Myers, if Myers is able to put this one down, Tim, then of course the quarter will be a standoff, and that's not good when you consider the 13-point deficit that Lakeview had after one. Yeah, Lakeview won the second quarter. 
quarter that set the tone for Ishtoming. We got eight minutes to go. It's Ishtoming 55, Lakeview 44 in Class C. You're watching the MHSAA on pass. Lakeview's cheerleaders whooping it up on the sidelines. Their team down by 11, but they've shown some more spark at the end of the quarter. Up top with Marshall Thomas, Rick Berkey alongside. Again, this is a game of three points. The two clubs have already set a new state championship record by combining for 12 triples, eight by Ishpeming. But Ishpeming, though, with that big lead, they've got it on three-pointers. The tendency is to maybe go away from that and go inside, but that's their strength. That is their strength, but I think that they've had to go inside because of uh, Lakeview switching up their types of defense. Also, they've expanded, extended their defense full court, which is causing instrument somewhat of a problem. Not a major problem, but, but it has it is enabled them to somewhat get back into this ball game. Well, Mr. Place for Lakeview seems to be getting the hot hand, and maybe that could uh, get the Wildcats even closer. Let's go back downside once again to Tim and Greg. And Ishpeming will inbound the basketball here now. They're up 11, Gregory, and this will be a wild eight minutes. What's going to happen, what we'll look for are the first three or four minutes to see who gets the early spurt. If it's Ishpeming, then they'll win this game, I think, handily. Well, oh, that's a big block by Shane Bies with four fouls on him. Here's Brock Peters, and he can't quite get it to go. He had the shot he wanted. Pressure without the foul, that has to be the thought process right now for Lakeview. Yeah, Byes went ahead and made that block with four fouls on him, and that would have ended his career because he's a senior. On that play, just very close, but he's still in there. That shot isn't the one they wanted, and Jason Main pulls it down. Now a chance to cut it to single digits here for a Lakeview. And there's really no need to, to hurry to take four shots. There's plenty of time if you're Lakeview. Now it's down to nine, and that's as close as it's been since the first quarter. That's 10 for Shane Byers, 11 for Shane Byers, and it's a nine-point game. If they lose him, they're going to really be in trouble. On three, once again, there's Jason Lawson with a three at three of them in the first quarter. He's been the answer man. 18 for Jason Lawson, only a junior. They needed that one. Rod Peters, that's going to be too low, but he's going to hustle and get it back. Gregory says they are in obviously a big hurry here. And no need to. Jason May for three. Play your own game, Gregory. They want to fire him. Well, the thing I'm saying is no, that, there was nothing wrong with that shot. <laughs> he took it comfortably. It wasn't forced. That was a good shot. Yeah, they've got a state record, a championship record now for most three-pointers by both teams in a game. Is that a charge? Oh. Did they just foul him out of his career? That's the one buys will end his career on, I believe. If that's on Shane Buys, that's five. Let's see what happens here. That's his fifth foul, and boy, they could use his side. His career ended with that one right there. Here's, here's the tough part about it. He is their only inside threat today. Skorka has not been able to get on track. And that's gonna hurt. Yeah, but they had to take a chance, put him back in there. He's very upset, putting him back in there to try and get back into the game. And that's it for him. His career comes to an end. So on the line, Mark Delangelo. He has 12 points off the bench. Of course, he averages 10 points a game. So it isn't totally unexpected. No, the one they consider is, is Lawson. He came in averaging seven points a game. He's got 18. Whistle and a foul. This is going to be a foul-filled, contact-filled fourth quarter here as these two teams race to the finish. And as it is, it's been 38 years since Lakeview has won a state title. There's the contact right there, midcourt. Good call. All right, Charbonneau now with four fouls for Ishpeming. And he's going to get a rest here. See, the thing that Shane Byers would have had to do on the floor with four, re four fouls, Tim, it's just avoid contact. I mean, he was almost taken out of the defense equation. Yep. He should have been looking just to rebound, but avoiding all contact because they needed him out on the floor. Oh, Skorka, I think, 
tipped it up and in. He got a fingernail on it. He got a fingernail and it was good. If they give it to Scork up, they do. 60-51, nine point lead now. Back to single digits. Here's where they need to exercise patience on the defense. No reaching, go for your steals, but don't foul. This has got to seem like a eternity for the Ishpeming fans right here. <laughs> they caught Thompson on the turnover. He palmed the ball. He turned it over in his right hand. Now, and Ishpeming's going to call timeout and discuss a little bit and just get some sanity back to this game. Crowd's going wild. 5.39 to go in the state Class C championship game. One of your sponsors today is True Value Hardware. Okay, Gregory, what happened here? Well, watch right in this area right there. Somebody's going to get a very, very slight hand on this rebound. And I think it's 52 Scorka. And if it is, you see it right there. That's been about his... So your only inside activity today. So you're saying if he'd have clipped his nails this morning, that would have been an air ball. That, that may not have gotten there. Okay. All right. Most three-point field goals for one team is eight, and we've got Ishpeming for nine. So Ishpeming now has a championship game three-point field goal record. And they've only missed 14 shots today, now 15 shots. They're now 21 of 36 in the game, and yet they're still struggling to hang on to their lead. This Brock Peters has got ants in his pants, hustling it down the floor. There's a penetration, the kick out. Stork has been short all day. It's been a struggle for him, and then he gets a foul. He has been short, and now he has his third foul. He just seems out of his rhythm completely. Seems a little nervous. I mean, this is a big game, and as you said, Lakeview. I mean, if they win this championship, these guys will be remembered forever in their town. Yep. A lot of be, pressure. They'll be in the record book and on the trophy forever. So Wishman Ming is having all of its uh, free throw shooting talent tested here. Matthew Berg is on the line here. He has not scored yet today. Hasn't had a lot of playing time today. And looks just perfect. First point for Matthew Berg here this afternoon. From the free throw line this year, he's a good one. 73%. He's only missed 13 all year long. He has a nice shooting touch with it, too. Of course, he only gets one of two. Ten-point game, whistle foul. That'll be on Ishpeming. Stops the clock, which they don't want. Ishpeming foul, 14. That's three fouls on Mark Delangelo. And so right in front of our table here, Lakeview's Brock Place inbounds the ball. And he wants it back, too, at the first moment. He's got it. Chris Thompson drives in and gives it to Peters for three. You couldn't draw it up any better. It just didn't make the shot, but excellent penetration and the kick out. And then Skorka goes over his own guy. That caused a turnover, but Ishpeming can't save it. Hey, look at the guys from Ishpeming. You got to love that. I mean, they're, they're hustling. They're giving up the body. Forget floor burns, scrapes, and that sort of stuff. Just get to the basketball. They're saying it's too long a bus ride home without that trophy. That is a long way up there. I've been to the, I've been in that area. It's 450 some miles, and they want the first place trophy to make it a little easier. And it will be very easy. That bus will ride on air if they can hang on here in the final 447. Good Excellent shot. Excellent hustle. Yep. Peters is double team. Somebody's open, but not for long. No shot clock in the high schools. There's Jason Main. That one's off. So Ishpeming withstands that charge. Ishpeming has led the entire game, but has been out of whack really since the first quarter when they had a 23-7 lead. It was so big then, they've held on to it. Although they did have it up to 22 in the third quarter and then had it cut to nine. It's now 10. And Ishpeming's going to press here, but that's going to create three-on-one numbers, although Peters is a little bit slower, and then lays it up and in. He was slow, but actually he was plotting his path. Plotting his path, and when he saw an opening, exploded to it. Rock place with 21 points now. Good ball. A 
football is going to go over to Lakeview. They're going to get a chance to slice this thing to six. There's a lot of time left here for an eight-point game to swing. Lakeview has caused so much havoc at both ends of the floor. Well, the thing they're doing a better job, Tim, in their pressure, they're protecting the basket. I'm not so, so they're not sure. giving up layups. Well, the issue to me, here goes Clark Place for three. That one is just, that's just nothing but slow. Well, you know what? He's got to be tired. Yeah. He's got to be just a little bit fatigued. You say young players don't get tired. No, they don't get tired for long, but even they need a breath or two. And when they start pulling up a short on those shots, that is nothing but a sign of fatigue. He's not getting the legs in it. And yeah, he does look tired. And he was slow getting back down the floor, but this one, he can't convert the layup. This one, he has really struggled here in this quarter. Place shot won't go, and it's pulled out of there by Brett Meyer. Either I get a timeout, or I get place out of the game for maybe 30 seconds. Get a timeout. Inside, that time it falls for Brock Place. He's exhausted. He's like a fighter on a rope, so it looks like. And Hishtermi gets the timeout, and it's a six-point game. This timeout is going to benefit Lakeview tremendously. You're watching the MHSAA on pass. we got a big finish coming up here in Class C at the Prison Center. Tips down with Greg Kelser at the Breslin Center. Gregory, it's not over. It's not over. And so much energy has been expended by the pressure defense of Lakeview. They come up with this steal, and with the little energy they have left, Place is able to put it up and in. Ishpeming calls a timeout to regroup themselves, but it's a timeout that Lakeview very much needed. Brock Place is 9 for 20 from the floor. His career high until the day was 18 points. He now has 23 on the day. We've broken all the three-point championship game records in this one today. One team, two teams, and it's a six-point game. Ishpeming has never trailed and led by 22 in the first quarter. And that's a block. I'll tell you one thing, the blocks have been consistent. Yep. When's the last time we had a charge? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, the blocks <laughs> have been physical, too. That one goes against 225-pound Tony Howes. I have to wipe up the sweat off. Look at the look at just look at the contact on that. You're right. There have been some major league collisions in this game. And Brett Myers is 190. Who hit him? And he's 190. So that's 410 pounds colliding right there. There are big misses from here on out, and Lakeview will have it back with a chance to cut it to four or three, with 3:06 to go. I think Jerry Racine, the Ishpeming coaches, and a little er er worried over there now. A 22-point lead early in the third quarter. I wish we could get a look at the different benches. You got everybody standing Whoa! for Lakeview. Everybody up standing for Lakeview. Everybody sitting worried for Ishpeming. Three-point game, 26 points for Brock Place, and then a foul on the backcourt they didn't want. Jason Main has four. But on the line, Ishpeming's going to have to make these. I was about to say, the way Ishpeming is all of a sudden pulling up short on the free throw line, that might be a pretty good defensive play. You never know. It stops the clock, though. That's the important thing. A lot of credit to the Lakeview Wildcats who battled back. Just shows these leads are never safe. Look at the bench. These guys were all up and cheering, feeling good a few moments ago. Everyone's sitting, hanging on now. Mark Delangelo has hit five consecutive free throws. And they've needed all those free throws to stay in their top. And he's a 71% free thrower coming into this. Angelo trying to get some breathing room, and he calmly does just that. Big free throws. Now Lakeview with a lot of time and a five-point deficit. Whistle inside, stops the clock. But guess what? A another block. <laughs> yep. Well, that'll be four fouls on Brett Myers. So the attrition's about to begin. We've already had one player foul out, and as you mentioned earlier with Shane Bice fouled out, that really hurt him. He's been out three minutes now. Just think maybe they'd be a little closer to Lakeview with Shane Bice in there. Well, maybe not. You know why, Tim? There hasn't been any half-court basketball. Everything has been pretty much transitional for Lakeview. I mean, they're getting steals and it's open court. So Baez's presence may be lost on the defensive end where they need a rebound. 
but I don't think so much in the offense right now. That's seven points now for Chris Thompson, four-point game. And Alvin Tights trying to end a problem. They've been the runner-up in 89, 90, and 92. They're trying to avoid going over four. And it isn't easy. UP lost the D game this morning. Crystal Falls Forest Park lost to Holy Redeemer, Detroit 55-46. Out of bounds, that will go back to Lakeview, a three-point lead. And now Lakeview, for the first time since the first minute of the game, on this possession, has a chance to tie it up. You know, early on, it was Lakeview that could not handle the basketball. Now it is definitely Ishwaming. I only have to remind you, the semifinal game, Lakeview did, in fact, force 20 turnovers in that game. Somebody hits a three, this place is going to be rough. And Brock Place has had a phenomenal game. This is to tie the game. Ishpeming fights it off. They got a man long if they can find him. Maine's got four fouls. That's close to five. Well, he did a good job of handling the basketball going against four defenders that time. Yeah, he did. And they're looking inside and they get the shot. They want it. And then he's fouled. Well, that, Brett Myers had the shot he wanted. Has that, has that lid tightened up a little bit on that end or what? <laughs> you got that right. I mean, look at this. Gets it inside. It rims out, but there he goes right back up. That's four fouls on David Skorka now. So here's Brett Myers. He's over two from the line today. Remember that missed layup if he doesn't convert these free throws. Well, he needs at least one of these to kick it up into a two-possession situation. Shot. Gonna get another. So now he's 0 for 3. So Brett Myers, who is a 68% free throw shooter, has missed them all. And his coach Jerry Racine says, throw it higher. He's asking him to launch it a little higher. Yeah, arc it up there a little bit more. I don't blame him. Throw it higher. That's there it. it. Is. You got it. He takes coaching well. Four-point game, meaning two possessions now, at least for Lakeview. A lot of energy expended by the Wildcats to come back. Rock plays for three. And the battle on the boards results in a travel. One minute, 25 seconds remaining to be played in the fourth quarter of the Class C state title game. Tim Stout with Greg Kelser. Hope you're enjoying it. It's a frantic fight to the finish here. Two prize fighters on the ropes in this one. For three outside, Chris Thompson doesn't get the roll, and it's pulled down by Chad Asgard, and then he's fouled. Some big rebounds in there, and hey, Asgard is the guy that usually steps up in this situation. He got that rebound in a crowd, was strong with it, and drew the foul. Thank you, foul 22. That foul is on Brock Place, Place his fourth. Four. You got Maine with four, Place with four, Skorka four, Bize is gone, and Thompson with three. So Lakeview is in a precarious situation with players, but shows is And shot. here's Chad Asgard. From the line, he is two for four today. Asgard, who had 26 points in the semis, only has six this afternoon. He's two for nine from the field today. But these would be big. He's a, he's a clutch time player. Now he knocks that down. The only good thing about this for Lakeview, even if he makes it, they're still only down two possessions. Ishwaming has made 12 free throws in the second half, which has saved their bacon completely. So now we have a five-point game. This got to a three-point deficit, then it's stolen away. And a foul is called, and that will send, I believe, is that number five? No, Tony Howes will have his third. Ishpeming still uh, hanging in there, tough with that lead. They won't give it up, and we're down to 67 seconds, and here's Jason Lawson. Who has had a big game offensively that time, coming up with a very big defensive play. I think he just caught uh, Brock Place a little lackadaisical that time with the basketball. This is Lawson's career high. It was 14. He has 18. But this is no time yet for Ishpeming to celebrate. 67 seconds to go. And the Hematites with a five-point lead. They led by 22 in the third quarter. 
free throws for the most part have fallen in the second half for Ishbemey to keep this lead. And Ishbemey's corner, Jason made for three. That one just not there. The putback is blocked away. Move. Batted out of there. And the layup is not good a goal again. That was a bad uh, shot off the glass by Delangelo, but Ishbemey still has it. We're inside a minute. And should work some clock. Force a foul. Inside, no, and a foul call. And that'll go again against Lakers' Tony Howes, and he has four. I think these guys only know how to play one way, and that's attack, attack. Forget working the clock. Now the Ishpeming fans are on their feet, Gregory. Timeout on the floor. We got 37.7 seconds to go. They both need a break. One of our sponsors this afternoon is the Michigan Abstinence Partnership. Out with Greg Kulser. It's sold out. Jack Breslin Student Event Center. We have 37 seconds to play in the Class C game. Ishpeming's led all the way, but it sure hadn't been easy. This is Brett Myers will be on the line here for the Hematites. He's closing out his career. Gregory, he's a senior. He's got 37 seconds That's left of it. Ishpeming won the B title in 1950, 45 years ago. Three runner-ups in 89, 90, and 92. All right, give him the signal again. Tell him to throw it higher. <laughs> Last time that worked. He's missed four out of five today. And that this is a big miss because two threes for Lake, you could tie the game. And the way the ball's turned over in this thing, now it's a three possession game. So that's a big one there. They don't have a lot of time to waste around either. They got to make some quick penetration, get a kick out, and get it up. And there it goes. First Thompson throws it up, catches nothing, and Ishpeming now in pretty good shape with 28 seconds to go. If they win, they weather the storm. Exactly. Lakeville has to match up, get a foul quickly. Ishpeming should just keep the ball, but spread the floor, move the ball. They don't need any more shots. There's a fifth foul on Jason May, who's only a junior. He fouls out with two three-pointers today and six points in the game. Join us late. All the three-point records have been shattered today. Most three-pointers in a game, two teams, one team. We've already had five three-pointers from Lakeview and nine three-pointers, a single-game record by Ishpeming. On the line, Mark Delangelo's made six in a row. Wasn't the guy they wanted to foul, so there goes Jason Main. He'll be back. And for the Wildcats, 67-60. Paul Delabatter is in a senior now, and out of there goes Tony Howes. At the line, 14, Delangelo. Mark Delangelo. One shot, bonus on. Off the bench today with 15 points. Oh, 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 oh. His first miss keeps Lakeview breathing a little bit, but they're going to have to fire it in a hurry. They're just going to let him go, but they need to get threes. Matter comes off. That one doesn't go. Delamatter shot him in a foul with 12 seconds to play. And if that's on uh, Brett Myers, he's gone. It is, and his career just ended. Brett Myers fouls out. He has eight points in the game. And for Brett Myers, he hopefully fouled out 12 seconds short, but only has to wait a few seconds to win a state title. He got nicked in the nose there a little bit. Yeah, he bit. paid for that. Yep. He'll remember that fifth foul. On the line is Chris Rader. Do they have to miss the second one deliberately, Gregory? No, no, no. You need points. You make them both. And try to steal it. Try to steal it. If you can't get it, the moment it comes in bounds, you foul. But what has to happen, everybody's got to match up right out of bounds because if someone gets loose, they can dribble the seconds out. Well, Lake, you never quit in this game. And they could have. I mean, they were down 22, and things looked hopeless. And cut it to a three-point game at 61 to 58. But since then, they just haven't been able to. You know, it, it takes a lot of energy out of you, as coaches like to say, to come from that far behind. So now we're down to the final 10 seconds. And Ishpeming, uh, barring a miracle here, is going to get its first state title in 45 years. And after three runner-ups here in the last few years, they got a man open to finish it off. And Chad Asgard is going to go. That's the nail in the coffin right there. You can count them down. You can celebrate in the upper peninsula. Our Class C 
state champions are the Ishpeming Hematites, who have won it this afternoon over Lakeview, 69 to 61. They are happy north of the Mackinac Bridge. Our basketball coverage here on pass continues this afternoon to four with a Class A final. Detroit Pershing and Flint Northern. Your Class C champion is Ishpeming, a 69-61 winner today over Lakeview. For Greg Kelser, Marshall Thomas, and our production crew from TCI Cablevision of Oakland County, I'm Tim Stout. So long, everybody.